Hey everyone, this is Teal from ParkerBlocks.com. Welcome to today's review of the HKC T7000 monitor. Now this monitor was sent over to me from GearBest.com. GearBest is a website that sells a lot of consumer electronics like monitors, computer products, phones, tablets, and a lot of other stuff. So recently they contacted me and asked if I want to check out any of their products. Uh, I can pick anyone to feature on my YouTube channel. So I did a search on their website, spent about an hour there looking through all the products and I came up with uh, my selection, which is this uh, monitor. I've not heard of HKC as a brand before, but I've always wanted to test out those unknown Korean or China brands. I've read a lot about them and some of the products, they have really attractive pricing. So I really want to test to see if the quality is there. And I picked this monitor because it's said to support up to 99% Adobe RGB and that is supposed to be suitable for graphic design work or digital art of even photo editing. So after using this monitor intensively for the last few days, I now have more information to talk about. But first, let me tell you the things that are included with this monitor. There are two graphics cables included. One is a HDMI cable, one is a display port cable. Both are full size ports. That means for the display port, it's full size as well. There is no mini display port. So if you are using a mini display port, you will need to get a mini display port to either HDMI or mini display port to full size display port. The other cable included is the power cable and then there is the power brick. When you take the monitor out of the box first, it is not set up with the stand. You have to fix up the stand yourself and they have included six screws for you. So there is a little bit of DIY setup that you have to do for yourself. Um, you can watch the unboxing video that I have created one week ago. It goes through the setup. It's basically very simple. You just take your own screwdriver and screw the stand to the display. And this is how the display will look like after you have set it up. The design of this screen is very simple, very clean. The build quality looks decent enough. The uh, bezels are quite thin. There's the logo here, the power indicator light here, which is red in color. And to me, it's a bit distracting. So I'm definitely going to use some black tape to tape this off. I like the stand because it has very minimal footprint on my table. The BenQ monitor that I'm currently using, it has a very large uh, fit. So here, this is very minimal. I really like this and it looks quite nice as well. The screen size is 27 inches and this screen is matte so it diffuses light. It's not glossy, it's not reflective. This is the best type of surface when it comes to graphic design work or photo or video editing work. This is quite a thin monitor. Behind there are three ports, the full size display port, full size HDMI port and if you are still using DVI, they have the DVI connector as well. Notice on the side here, there are no USB ports, there is no card reader, and there are no USB ports behind as well. The back looks like this, again very clean. This is where the power button is. This is actually a toggle with up, down, left, right movement, so you can use those movements to move around with the on-screen menu. And the stand is quite sturdy, this is quite a good stand. There is a 3.5mm audio jack behind, but I do not use that because it's difficult to reach. However, if you want to connect your speakers to this monitor, you can definitely do so. You can adjust for tilt, swivel and height. So if you need to swivel like this, the stand will move. And this is the tilt. And if you want to rotate the screen, you can also do so. So this may be an orientation that some page designers um, will use. For example, if you are designing a single page, a single vertical page, using this orientation will allow you to view that page at 100% uh, without any zooming. So this can be good for checking font sizes. Or if you are a photographer who takes a lot of photos in vertical format, then maybe it may be better to use this in this uh, orientation. However, um, you do need to change your orientation in the OS. For Mac OS, you can just turn it 90 degrees. I'm not too sure about Windows. 
and of course you can adjust for the height and all this is quite easy to adjust I'm able to adjust them just by sitting down on my chair so that's great now the viewing angles they are good not perfect but they are good I do notice some color shifting but it's very very minimal so when I'm looking at the screen straight on like this um, the colors are mostly accurate but some of the colors at the far end there is some minimal color shifting it's not too bad it's not a deal breaker but I just um, have to say it because I do see the color shifting at those edges let me bring up a file to show you what I'm talking about so this is an Adobe Illustrator file this is a page design file and using such a large screen it's wonderful when it comes to graphic design work photo or video editing especially for graphic design um, if your page is smaller than A3 or A3 in size you can actually view the page at 100% zoom and this is great for checking font sizes to see if they are going to look legible or not this is where the color shifting occurs I'm not sure if you can see it or if my camera can capture it accurately so right now I'm actually uh, on this side of the page looking here and I do see some color shifting some of the areas here they are supposed to be white but they are actually gray because of the viewing angle if I'm looking at the screen straight on like this it's not really a big deal I do not notice um, I do not notice a lot of color shifting it's just that when I move my head here then I look over then the color shifting is more pronounced it's very minor but I just felt like I have to mention it and notice the matte surface I actually have a light source there and if this is a reflective screen what you will see is just a big block of white reflecting the light off and this matte surface is really great to work on all right the colors out of the box I think they are quite decent I have already calibrated my screen for color accuracy and it's able to support up to 99% sRGB and 96% Adobe RGB so color accuracy for this screen it's quite good the resolution of this screen is 2560 by 1440 so that's quite high resolution for a screen like this it's not as sharp compared to a 4k screen on a 27 inch monitor but personally for me if I'm using 4k resolution I will use at least 30 inches and above so for 27 inches I think this resolution it works really nice it still makes everything looks sharp enough if you're going to look very close at the user interface or the words the menus there is some pixelation but usually for me when I'm working with this screen size I'm seated about more than an arm's length away and everything it looks sharp enough for me and this resolution allows you to put a lot of user interface on the side for example here I have this huge area that's taken up by the palette I can still see a lot of my canvas I can still comfortably work around this so this is a nice and more than satisfactory resolution for a screen size like this using this screen for editing photos is wonderful because the color accuracy is there and also because of the screen size and resolution you can view the photos large and in detail again not as detailed as a 4k screen but a 4k screen is significantly more expensive compared to this screen so um, if you are a budget graphic designer or a digital artist who is looking for a budget monitor uh, this may be something you can check out let me switch over to final cut so again this is video editing and we have a lot of user interface elements here and here and when i'm editing videos i really like to see the uh, preview here large and this monitor allows me to do so so that's great oh okay let's talk about the menus because this monitor is made by the Chinese for the Chinese market all the words here in the menu they are in Chinese however the icons I think they are quite clear what they 
what some of the functions are for. For example, this is for the brightness, this is for the contrast, this is for the color palette. Let me go in and here you can uh, switch between sRGB or Adobe RGB. By default, this screen doesn't have Adobe RGB turned on when you set it up so you have to go into the menu the monitors menu and turn it on yourself another thing that i noticed is they have this automatic brightness automatic brightness turn on that means when the screen is dark it will make the screen even darker when the screen is bright it will sort of make the screen uh, if you give the screen more contrast and you have to turn that off it's here this third icon you can turn it off here you can just turn it off here so those are the two basic settings that you need to change when you are using this monitor so far i have mentioned a lot of good things about this screen so what are some of the downsides well for one i noticed a dead pixel around this area it only shows up when the screen is totally black so that was when i discovered the dead pixel for a resolution like this um, when I'm working, I actually do not notice the dead pixel, but it's very irritating for someone who just bought the monitor to discover that there is a dead pixel there. But when I'm actually working on it, I don't uh, see the pixel affecting me. Now, I do not know the dead pixel policy with Gearbest. There is no mention on their website, but Gearbest, they do offer a one year warranty with this screen you have to ship this back to Gearbest to one of their warehouses you have to check out the location I think there is one in Europe in USA and the third one I'm not too sure where it is but you have to ship it back to Gearbest not to the company HKC that is something quite interesting because usually when you buy a monitor from a particular manufacturer you would ship that monitor back to that manufacturer but in this case you are actually shipping back to Gearbest Besides the dead pixel, I have to talk about the back lighting as well. This is LED backlight colors. And the lighting is quite even when you are working in a bright environment like this, when you have the screen, the user interface, all this are uh, lighted up. But when the screen is totally black, let me show you how it looks like. This is how the backlight looks like. There are areas of glow on the top left bottom left uh, middle and the bottom right and also at the top right here there is some glow as well and overall you can see that there is the ips glow on the screen so the back light is not very even this is how it looks like when you are watching a movie so the backlight unevenness is less obvious because the film is now playing and because of the high contrast the highlights versus the black bars i can still see some of the light showing through especially when the screen the film it has some uh, really dark scenes if you are someone who is going to watch a lot of movies then the uneven backlighting when the screen is totally dark it can be a bit distracting having said that personally for me I use monitors 99% of the time for work so I only watch like one movie a month or one movie every two months on the screen so even on my BenQ monitor which has excellent backlighting um, I never really get the chance to use uh, that for watching movies most of the time it's just for work purposes and for work purposes when you have the user interface lighted up like this when you're looking at your work uh, when the screen is not totally dark like watching movies where there are black bars around i don't notice the backlight and the backlight issue the unevenness is not really a deal breaker for me in fact right now i don't see any backlight issues i guess the last downside if i have to nitpick would be the design earlier on i said that the design is clean and simple well um this monitor doesn't look as good compared to other monitors, the other um, better looking monitors, but it's very functional. Personally for me, I prefer function over form and I think it looks good enough for me. It's simple, it doesn't distract me from the work itself, so it's great. So the main downside for this monitor would be the backlighting. If you are going to watch a lot of movies, if you 
are going to work in an environment where it's totally dark when the screen is totally dark then the backlight is definitely going to be an issue but for my work purposes um, when the screen is lighted up like this i get to see all the user interface i get to see my work i really do not notice the uneven backlighting at the corners here or here it it just looks good so uh, under this sort of condition it looks good enough and more than satisfactory for the type of work that I do. The viewing angles is another downside. I mention it a lot because the viewing angles of the monitor that I'm using in my office, uh, that monitor is an IPS monitor and it's really, it's really not up to par. The viewing angles are really um, atrocious because if i'm working on a photograph and let's say a person is in the photograph the skin tone will look right here but if i move the photograph down here the skin tone would change color and that is obviously unacceptable but that's the monitor that the co company has provided so i have to work with it but now with this monitor i'm going to bring this monitor uh, to my office to use this exclusively because the colors are fantastic compared to the computer compared to the monitor that I'm using in the office and oh yeah I'm able to bring this monitor to my office because I do not need to return this to Gearbest it would be very expensive for me to ship this back to Gearbest so if you do need to ship this monitor back to Gearbest for warranty purposes um, you have to take note of the shipping cost when you are buying this monitor. Overall, I find the performance of this screen to be more than satisfactory to me. I really like the screen because I appreciate the color accuracy. Color accuracy is very important to me. And for the price that it's selling at, which is currently US $430 on Gearbest, I think um, it's quite worth the money you do have some issues with the backlighting with the viewing angles with the dead pixel um, but at that price $430 is very difficult to find an equivalent monitor that supports up to um, 90 over percent ODB RGB the other monitor that I'm currently using is the BenQ SW 2700 and that is US $200 um, more than this screen and the Dell UP2716D which is also an Adobe RGB screen that is also $200 more than this screen of course those monitors they have more features for example they have USB ports they have the card reader uh, for the BenQ monitor it has the card reader and also the shading hood um, but I don't think that those features are worth an extra $200 more. Maybe the warranty um, service, the warranty protection is worth the money, but definitely not the USB ports or the card reader. So overall, I would give this monitor a 4 out of 5 stars. One star deducted for the backlight viewing angles and that fit pixel. Um, yeah. So that's all for my review today. If you need more information, you can check out my text review or if you want to check out the product specifications, you can visit the product page on Gearbest. All the links are in the video description below. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.